Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back to Busta Rhyme. Uh, sorry for the long delay since the last video. I've been kind of busy lately, uh, which is why I haven't had a chance to upload recently. But uh, happy to get back at it here today. Um, as you can see, I finished building up my battery box. I've got it filled now with 2,000 grams of hydrogen, which we can see here in the in the gas view. So the hydrogen will help uh, keep it cool. Now the reason we use hydrogen gas in here is because it has a specific heat capacity of 2.4, which I believe is the highest heat capacity of any gas in the game. Uh, if we look at carbon dioxide, for example, it's only 0.8. Uh, oxygen is 1, and then hydrogen is 2.4, so it's quite a bit thicker, if you will. <clears throat> um, and for anybody who's wondering what heat capacity is, um, heat capacity is the amount of heat in DTUs. Whoops. DTUs are just the thermal unit that's used in the game. So it's the, the amount of heat required to raise one gram by one degree C, right? So, um, so one gram of hydrogen would take 2.4 DTUs to raise its temperature by one degree. Um, and that essentially means it takes more heat to raise the temperature. Uh, once the temperature is raised, it takes more cooling to remove the heat. Um, but in this case, you know, it's just gonna help result in more temperature stability inside the room and will be more efficient for us to keep it nice and cool in there. Um, <clears throat> now, since, uh, since we finished last time, I, I brought up a line of petroleum from all the way down here. Okay, so coming out of my array of storage tanks, and this goes all the way up to the surface, um, I also ran a line of hydrogen gas, which is how I filled the room. Okay, that comes all the way up here as well. Uh, you can see I still have a little bit of pipe left over, but I just ran it into that vent and then let it flow until I couldn't fit any more in there. So with the petroleum, um, I ran it through uh, some cooling pipes that run through here. This is just regular granite pipe. Um, I did put radiant pipe behind the transformers since those generate twice as much heat as the batteries do, but I don't, we probably don't really need to use radiant pipe in there since there's so much pipe and uh, they don't create tons of heat, but it should be more than enough to keep it cool. <clears throat> so what I want to do today is build the actual cooling system. Let's get another object under investigation with our solar panels. Um, yeah, so I want to build out the rest of the cooling loop. Um, and we'll do that with a steam engine and an aqua tuner, as we normally do for that sort of thing. Um, and I was thinking that this time, speaking of heat capacity, um, I was thinking that rather than... Let me see if I can get petroleum here. Where's petroleum? Here, let's look up petroleum in the database. Um, heat capacity comes into play with cooling as well. So, as an example, petroleum, which is what I'm using in the cooling loop, has a heat capacity of 1.76 um, and conductivity of 2. So the conductivity is is not bad, but um, water has a heat capacity of 4.1, so it's more than twice as much. Now, when you run coolant through an aqua tuner, the aqua tuner is going to reduce the temperature by 14 degrees C, no matter what that fluid is. So if I were to cool petroleum uh, with its heat capacity of 1.76, that's only about half as effective as running something like water through it, 
which has a heat capacity of 4.1. Because 14 degrees on 4.1 heat capacity water is a lot more cooling than 14 degrees on 1.76 heat capacity petroleum. Uh, that's why supercoolant is so great. Supercoolant has a heat capacity of, I think, around 8. <clears throat> um, and with supercoolant, you can run... Uh, you can run the aqua tuner very efficiently. So what I'm going to try this time is I'm going to try to build a I'm going to build a heat exchanger where I will run water or salt water more specifically since that's what I have handy. I'm going to run salt water through my aqua tuner to cool down a chamber that's full of salt water. And then I'm going to run the pipe of petroleum through the salt water with radiant pipes to exchange heat with the salt water. I'm going to try it. Um, last time I built this, I was just cooling the petroleum directly with the, um, with the aqua tuner. So I figured I'd try something a little bit different this time. And uh, we'll see if it's any better or not. Okay. So... Um, I think I'm going to need to remove some of these pipes. Let me see how much room I have here and if this is going to really give me enough space to build something. Um, yeah, I could put the steam engine here or here. That would leave me one additional tile on this side. I suppose that will be good enough. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete... I'm going to delete all of this. That petroleum will just disappear into space. And I'll delete this too, just to get all these pipes out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, and then one more. So this will be where the steam engine goes. <clears throat> Um, but I'm not going to place it there just yet. And in fact, I'm going to leave two tiles open so that I can get the gas out of there. Uh, let's speed up time here. X, all. Okay. Okay, so the steam engine will go there, and then we'll put the aqua tuner just below it. And we'll make that out of steel. Um, now usually I place it right here. Is that a good place for it? Or should I put it more in the middle? It probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Well, I'll just do what I'm familiar with, okay? All right, and then we'll have more insulated tiles just below it. And so in here, I'm going to put pure water because this is going to be my steam room. I think I'm going to need to get rid of that pipe as well. This is part of the cooling loop, which is also, by the way, going to go up here to cool off my robo miners. <clears throat> so I'll need to I'll need to complete that loop as well. <clears throat> oh, and you know what? I'm also going to need one, two, three. I'm also going to need to cool off the uh, the generator. So we need to enclose that too, and we need to put drywall everywhere. All right, drywall is mafic rock we need to make sure none of this, none of our liquids or gases end up going off into space. Okay, now on the heat exchange portion, let's draw, or not draw, but let's plan our, our cooling loop here. 
Okay, so I'm going to start with liquid pipe. Or insulated pipe. And that goes into the aqua tuner. And then we're going to go past the aqua tuner. And into a bridge. So this way we can bypass the aqua tuner if it doesn't need to turn on. And then that'll come back down. Okay, and then we'll also have a pipe for the steam to come out. Okay, and then below there, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so this is gonna be my, this is gonna be the heat exchange portion. And I hope this will be big enough. Okay, so we'll make radiant pipe out of aluminum. So here my, this is where the cooling is gonna begin. Actually, we'll just use some regular pipe to get over here. And then we'll use radiant pipe. So I'm gonna come down by two. And just do something like that. Let's try that again. Is this any better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. This is going to need to be all drywalled as well. Ah, except... Oh crud. Background buildings. I didn't want to cancel all that. I'm going to put some temp shift plates in here too. And I'll make those out of diamond. And this time I'm just going to put them in a checkerboard pattern. that. Alright, let's do it like that. And then drywall. That'll help with the heat exchange. At least that's my hope. Okay, and then the petroleum itself will run a similar pattern on the bottom two tiles. Okay, so this could be... So if I run this through it, then this will be... This will be the end of the run. Okay, and then this will be the beginning of the run. Like that. And on these exterior tiles that are in space, we don't need to use insulated pipe or anything because as long as they're in a vacuum, they won't exchange heat with anything. Okay, so the, the coolant's going to flow this way. It'll go through here, and then from here we'll run it up to there, which, in fact, we can start doing right now. And I'll just run it straight up this ladder, and we'll connect with that. And then I'm going to put a... whoops. I'm going to put a liquid bridge down here at the end. 
so that we can get the petroleum to flow into this pipe before we connect the rest of the loop. Okay, and then I'll just build it from here. I'll leave that break. I guess I'm going to need another ladder. Or do I? I could run it down. Yeah, we could run it back this way. And reconnect there. Oops. Okay. So that'll be our cooling loop. Oh, and I need a temperature sensor. Let's see, that's under plumbing. Liquid pipe thermal sensor, we'll put that right here. That's gonna measure the temperature that's returning to the aqua tuner, at least fairly close to it. Probably not as close as it should be, but. Um, I can use lead automation, no, let's not use lead automation wire. Um, it's going to be cold down here, but in here it's going to be steam temperature and right in front of the aqua tuner there could be some there could be some local patches of fairly high temperatures. So I'll leave that the way that it is. Okay. I think I can close this up. Uh, and then we'll need to connect power. Actually, I'm going to deconstruct that and I'll put a heavy watt wire plate for our steam turbine. I don't remember exactly where the power plug is. Let's check that here real quick. Okay, last tile. Alright, so that'll hook up there, and then this is going to need power as well, and in fact I will do that with, I think I'll do that with heavy watt wire as well. Okay, so now, now our loop is almost running. And I've got this pipe here, so once, once it does start flowing I can, I can fill the rest of the piping from here. We'll just connect a bridge to it. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that now. There's no danger of overfilling it, as long as we use a, a bridge like that. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that's it. Now I just need a way to fill this chamber with water. Actually, cancel. Cancel. Cancel all. There we go. I'll just take advantage of this pipe. Okay, and this one I'm going to fill with salt water. I don't think that they can get here. Okay, and we're going to run this if the temperature is below 14C. But I don't want to turn it on until everything's ready, so... As soon as that wire gets built, then we can put... Well, I'll leave this open for now, but I'm going to need another heavy watt joint plate going in the side here to feed this power as well. Okay, let's get that swept up. We can close those two tiles. As soon as they finish sweeping that, I'll close the bottom two tiles, and then I can start filling this up with salt water. There we go. 
Okay, now for salt water, um, I put a pump down here. I put in a desalinator to give me clean water. So I've got a reservoir full of clean water and I have a reservoir full of salt water. So to begin with, we're gonna use the salt water. That's gonna come up here. Okay, and I dropped a little bit of rock in there, so I'm going to deconstruct this tile to bring it out before I start running the water in. I've got my pipe completed. I just need to put the bridge there. Unfortunately, at this stage of the game, it seems <laughs> we spend a lot of time waiting for guys to get up here. I was thinking about moving the living quarters. Well, I don't know. Once I get everything set up up here, I won't have to come up too much. You know, once I have my rockets built and everything. Um, I had been thinking about moving, moving my dupes up here closer to the top. Let's give that a, we'll give that a high priority. Okay. The game always auto saves when I try to build something. All right, now let's get that bridge made. See a lot of people going back and forth. Let's start analyzing our next planet. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Maybe not too interesting, actually. Hello. Here we go. Okay. Now the salt water should be flowing. Here it comes. Now, um, I'm using salt water there instead of pure water because salt water has a bit lower freezing point, 7.5, whereas fresh water has a freezing point of zero, of course, or minus 0. 0.6. Heat capacity is the same for all forms of water. Now this might take a little while to fill. I don't need to leave these tiles open because this is a vacuum already. So once this gets filled up, at least to the top section, then I can close it up. I usually leave these tiles open when there are gases in there so the gases can escape for the water to leak in, but in this case I don't really need that. <clears throat> and I could fill this with salt water as well. Um, but then when it turns into steam, the salt is going to remain. And I had a bad experience once where there was, uh, well, I was doing polluted water. Uh, the water evaporated, it left dirt behind. And then I started overheating because I didn't have enough steam generators and the dirt turned into solid tiles of sand and entombed the aqua tuner and it was a big mess so I'm just trying to avoid that but in any case because I don't need those tiles open I think I can go ahead and build my steam engine um, do I need steel on the steam engine I don't think so I'll make it with iron Uh, 
Um, and then I will have to provide some ventilation there. So when I build it, I'm going to leave... Uh, and that means I'm going to need to put some drywall behind that too. Yeah, I just need that one extra tile there. So that we can fill this with hydrogen for cooling. Oh, um, and I should, I also need to run my cooling loop through here. Um, yeah, so let's not forget that. way yeah I have that facing the wrong direction that's how it should go or is that the same way I just did it do, do. yeah Like that. Okay. So I'm going to pause and I'll come back when this is nearly full. Okay. Actually, while this is filling up, the other thing that we can do is we can start placing our petroleum blobs on the robo miners. And the way we're going to do that is just by, first I'm just going to clip this pipe so that no, so that the fluid's not going anywhere. And then we're just going to delete each of these little pipe sections here. And that'll cause the petroleum to leak out onto that tile. And so now we can see we've got a little bit of petroleum sitting on those tiles. And then we will replace those with a single section of radiant pipe. sweep the tiles off and that's all there is to it. I was hoping I was only going to get one section of radiant pipe and I end up with three. I can never figure out how the <clears throat> how the plumbing is going to work. All right, And then we can connect that again. It'll flow back in the right direction once everything gets fixed. Okay. And we still have a little ways to go there. And again, having some extra radiant pipe here is not going to hurt anything. Since it's in a vacuum, it's not going to exchange heat with anything anyway. Okay, and now we can see that our robo miners should begin cooling down a bit. Yeah, see now they're 39, 40 degrees instead of the 80 or 70 or whatever they were before. Okay, so that's our cooling solution done. Okay, and then once I get this pipe out of here, then I can finish the loop. All right, and we can... Fix 
first, then this. So that's nearly ready to go. Okay, just a few hundred more grams, and then I'll cut the pipe and we'll start running water up here to fill this area. Once this gets above a thousand kilograms, then we'll be up onto the top tile, which we'll be able to see there. <clears throat> Okay, so we're good there. All right, so we'll clip that pipe right there. I'll let the rest of the salt water flow through. And then we can seal up this last tile. And then we'll start to fill this chamber. clean water. Okay, so we can build that there. there and that goes there okay building the wire. <laughs> that sucks. Okay. Oh. Here, let's put some priority on this stuff. on the way. I'll let it work its way up and if I can't get this closed up again in time. Oh, come on. Just do it already. This is break time. I should do more dupes next time. You guys still awake down here? Okay. So, let's try this again. Pick that up. Otherwise, I'm sure it'll end up on the inside when I build on top of it. Oh, 
All right. Okay. So we only need half as much water in this one as we did in this one, and then we'll be able to clean up this pipe and then get things fired up. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so I got the chamber full of water. Um, surprisingly to me, as soon as these tiles filled up, this thing overpressurized. So I barely have three kilograms in these top tiles, but I think that should be enough steam. Um, I did disconnect the water pipe here. So now I'm going to delete this. And then we can finish our loop. And then we'll just need to fill this up with some hydrogen. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to mop up the water too. And sweep that out. Okay, so we'll put a little more insulated pipe there. Let's get that cleared out on the double. Oh, and then I can connect my batteries, which I have yet to do. So let's go ahead and get that going as well. Okay. So again, we'll want some radiant pipe in here. And I'll just take it out from there. Come on, get that stuff out of there. as well over there I hope they can get in there yeah good done guys okay there go my batteries all right and then I just need two more tiles And the cooling loop is now flowing, which means we can start to fill it up the rest of the way. Okay. Let's get this fired up. Oh. Let's put in some hydrogen. below 14C, right? <laughs> Son of a biscuit. I forgot to put coolant in my coolant pipe. Okay, so let's hold off on that. Uh, and I want to put salt water in there. So I have to I have to get rid of all this fresh water. All right, so I'm going to cut that there. And then I'll have to put a vent. And 
I think I'll be able to get a bridge in there from outside. Yeah. <laughs> ah, it's those minor details. Okay, coolant loop is filled. So we'll deconstruct that liquid bridge. And we shouldn't have to touch that again for the remainder of the game. And if we look at our temperatures, yeah, it's starting to get warm in here. But the liquid is 27 degrees. The hydrogen's getting a little bit warmer. So we will need to get some active cooling here going fairly soon. But our batteries are charged. And the water in here will probably start to warm up a bit as well. Okay, and now we got lots of battery power we can use. I can keep that at below. It's not going to activate if there's no liquid in there anyway. Okay. Great. So we'll start draining the water out. And again, the water is just going to evaporate into space. And then once it's gone, I'll connect that pipe to this and we'll start running... Actually, we can, let's start running the salt water up now, so we don't have to wait as long. We'll cut that. Ugh, I'm going to have to wait for a construction job now. just to see how well or how poorly this works. We'll find out together. Okay. Deconstruct that. How cold is that? And it's not turning on. Oh, if above 14. There we go. Okay. So yeah, it's coming out nice and cool. If it goes in below 14C, it'll go through the aqua tuner. Otherwise, it'll pass by it. So it's, well, right now it's coming out around 10. Uh, the heat transfer in these pipes is very good, as you can see. Our salt water is starting to cool down rather slowly, it seems. Okay, it's gradually cooling down. Okay, and it looks like we're good on hydrogen. So I'll go ahead and cut that pipe. Okay, so our loop right now is starting at 24C. And it's finishing off at... 24C. <laughs> I think we're actually warming it with this salt water right now, rather than cooling it.
All right, but that temperature will gradually work its way down. Salt water is colder than the petroleum. Or at least the salt water in the pipe is. Let's see, that's coming in at about 9 or 10 degrees. And then it's going up about 10 degrees just in this little short section of pipe. So I think we have a decent exchange of temperature. Yeah, 8C here. And 21C, 22C by the time it comes out. That's not bad. 24 in, 22 out. Once the salt water gets colder, we'll get a better picture here of how quickly it cools to petroleum. Um, <clears throat> the salt water in the tank is going to change the temperature of the petroleum about twice as fast as it'll change the temperature of the salt water in the pipe because of their differing heat capacities. Okay, but it's nice and cool in there. All right, everything's around 25 degrees, and we'll probably continue to drop a bit. Up here, mining drills, or the robo miners rather, 23C. So you can see how that tiny little practically imperceptible I mean you certainly can't see it visually but it's there if you look at the liquid view but that little just that little blob of petroleum is what helps get the temperature between that pipe and the robo miners so the robo miners will stay nice and cool and we'll get to see that here in the next meteor shower let's hang out for a minute and see how that goes and then we should be able to see that they maintain a pretty stable temperature even when they're working I'm surprised, uh, I'm actually surprised the water in here is not getting hotter more quickly. I've got insulated pipe, so it shouldn't be doing much to cool this down, right? Well, let's see. It's coming out of the aqua tuner at 5.2 and down here it's 5.2. Yeah, so it's not, the insulation is working pretty well. That's 46 down here. All right, salt water's down to 19.8 and it should eventually settle out at around 14 degrees. Or maybe a little bit lower, maybe around 10, maybe around 7 degrees, actually. Because if it's 14 degrees, then the aqua tuner is going to turn on, so I guess it should settle out somewhere around 7. Somewhere in the middle. Okay, we're coming in at 4.6. Coming out at 18.4. So this takes a while because we're only sending in 10 kilogram packets of salt water and it's trying to cool down, let's see, 5, 10, 15, probably 16 or 17 tons of salt water in this tank. So it'll take a while for the temperature to stabilize. <clears throat> okay. And the robo miners are continuing to cool down. Beautiful. Now, the only time I've seen this become an issue, um, there have been times in my other games where I would lose power to the doors for some reason. The meteor shower would come in, and then sometimes meteors would come in at an angle and get regolith lodged in here, and sometimes that would take out my little blob of petroleum and I would have to put it in there again. 
And then, of course, you have, you know, 300, 400 degree regolith sitting there heating up the robo miner. So <clears throat> um, that's about the only danger. But but since that's happened, I've kind of changed the way I distribute power. So when that happened to me before, the doors were relying on my battery charge from the solar panels. But now I have I have everything hooked up to the same grid, so that should not be a problem anymore. Okay, I'm going to drain out this pipe. I'm going to leave the petroleum pipe here. Um, we're going to need that for fueling our rockets at some point in the near future, so I'll leave that there. Uh, but this water pipe I don't think I'm going to need anymore. I'll leave the stub down here somewhere, but I do want to empty it out. And uh, I think we're all set for now. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you all next time.